First question from Big Country 92. When training for strength gains versus muscle gains, what's the difference and how can you focus on one more than the other? Okay, so uh, you can focus on one more than the other, but I want to say this. They are so closely connected uh, that training exclusively for one is not going to... Both both belong in each program. They do. If and your goal is strength gain, right? You you should muscle size is connected to how strong 100%. you are. 100%. So and how strong you are or training for strength builds muscle. They're very very closely connected. Here's the big difference. The big difference besides rep ranges and all that stuff cuz we can get into that as well. The biggest difference in my opinion is if you're training purely for strength, you're probably going to focus on the skill of strength yeah. more than anything else. In other words, I want to be as strong as possible. Let's be specific. I want to be as strong as possible in the squat. Right. That means I'm going to practice the skill of squatting. Right, because then you could sharpen up the technique. There's a lot of things that you can do to revisit to you know to allow you to, to lift more weight because that's the only real goal. Like You want to be able to move the weight more effectively. And, of course, that requires more strength, which then you end up building muscle. But the, the actual focus of it, you could you yes. know, direct more. Because it's, it's technique. It's also the skill of how the muscles fire in, in, you know, perfectly for that particular lift. That's a lot of strength. Like you look at power lifters and they practice their lifts uh, constantly, constantly and yeah. just master the skill of well, strength. Well, I would, I would say too that it, it's when when one is more of a goal than the other. So if it's more strength, then you're you're just spending more time in that type of a phase versus like a hypertrophy type training. And when you're more focused on building muscle and the look uh, uh, of your physique, you're spending a little more time in hypertrophy than you are strength. Like mm -hmm. so... You know, when I look at like bodybuilders, for example, if there's a mistake that some of even the pros tend to make is they're so heavily focused on hypertrophy, they don't get an, they don't ever cycle in like a strength. But the good ones do, <clears throat> the ones that really know what they're doing, train a lot of hypertrophy, but they intermittently have strength cycles that they, mm -hmm. they go in. That Those are some of your, your best bodybuilders know to do that, where they have a, a cycle of you know, four to six weeks that they run and they're training in the low rep range, three to five repetitions because they know the importance. But then they cycle back out and then they're staying more towards that eight to 12 mm -hmm. rep range for a majority or the bulk of their programming. And then the, the reverse is true for a strength training athlete. And that strength training athlete who's more heavily focused on strength, they're going to spend a majority of their programming in that probably three to five rep range. And then occasionally they're going to move, they're going to move into the hypertrophy. Here's some of the similarities between training for strength and training for muscle. And again, remember, they're very, very closely uh, connected. Some of the similarities include a lot of the exercises, the best strength exercises like squats and deadlifts and rows and presses are also some of the best muscle gain exercises. Oh, this is where there's debate. Uh, they're also training. They're also using uh, relatively heavy weight. That's very common. Uh, although strength athletes like to train in the lower rep ranges, they both still train with resistance, and the rep ranges aren't super, super <clears throat> different. But now let's talk about the differences. Let's get back to exercises. Trying to gain muscle, you tend to utilize more exercises. That's really the big difference, I would say. If you're looking mm. at... Yeah. Someone just wanted strength and someone wanted to build muscle. They're both going to squat, but the guy wanted to, or girl wanted to build muscle is going to do other exercises on top of it. They're looking for more variety, more volume, different angles. Yeah, right, if, you're, kind of if you're a strength athlete, right, so you're a power lifter, an Olympic lifter, no one gives a shit how much you, you reverse fly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you're a bodybuilder, that matters, right? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you care about you know building and sculpting a physique and building mm -hmm. a, a well-balanced muscle like the delt, then you're going to be focused on in, on reverse fly. So right. that's I, to me that's really although there is there is this uh, this debate about uh, people that are training for muscle that the best exercises aren't technically uh, squatting and deadlifting. This is an area where I think that we disagree with some of the people that uh, think that. You know, deadlift. I mean, like a bent over row versus a, like a deadlift. Well, even I just about? got tagged. I got tagged. I know you got tagged too. I, I did. You got tagged on it, right? The yeah. the, the guy who's talking. There's a handful of these guys. Yeah. The deadlift uh, is not a back exercise. Right. It's working the hips and the glutes and the hamstrings, and it's a okay. Again, a little rant here. This is my beef with uh, academia. You guys do a shit job of communicating. You really do. You do a shitty job of it because yes, that's technically true. Technically. The prime movers of a deadlift are not the the lats or the rhomboids, <clears throat> excuse me, or the traps. 
it's the glutes and the hamstrings and you know the so mainly lower body muscles. That's true. But if you've been training people for a long time, like I have, or anybody else who's trained people for a long time, you have them deadlift, you notice a profound effect on the musculature of the back, which is why I consider a deadlift to be a phenomenal back exercise. So although they're technically true, all they do is confuse a bunch of people, and now you have a bunch of people saying, I'm not going to deadlift because I'm already doing leg exercises and I want to do... Well, it, you're also just assuming that the the concentric or eccentric portion of an exercise is the only and most important part of an exercise. We talk about the benefits of isolation and, you know, what is like one of the most heavy loaded isolation exercises... You mean isometric? Or isometric, excuse yes. me. Uh, isometric exercise that you could possibly do. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Yeah. I mean, where else can yeah. you... Where else are you going to do something that's isometric that's 400 pounds, you know, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. your back is what is holding that in that place... You're a fool if you think that doesn't. You're just not going to get that kind of demand with any of the exercises. You're a fool yeah. if you think that's not going to stimulate a ton of back growth and development from doing that. Yeah, and yeah, it does. We silly. know we know this just through experience. Um, so here's another here's another difference. Strength athletes might do more sets of fewer exercises, whereas people focusing on building muscle might do less sets of more exercises. So here's an example: a strength workout might be you know, five sets of bench press, whereas a muscle building workout might be three sets of bench press, two sets of flies uh, on an incline and one set Pack of cable fly or something like that. Else, yeah. Right, right. So just more variety, different angles. Uh, rep ranges tend to be different. Building muscle, people who want to build muscle, I think, uh, you know, they tend to spend more time in that eight to 12 or 15 rep range. People wanting to build just strength will spend more time in the lower rep ranges. And and the truth is, unless you are a bodybuilder or a power lifter or Olympic lifter, this really belongs in everybody's routine. Totally. There's value for everybody. Everybody. No matter what, even if you're like somebody who's like, oh, I care more about strength than I do muscle. Doesn't matter. This Both these phases and programming belongs in your routine for max benefits. Totally. Yeah. The only people that... I would say that should spend more time in one or the other is somebody who's very sport specific, whether it be bodybuilding or someone who is just a strength training athlete. Because someone who is going to a powerlifting meet where they're only going to bench, deadlift, or squat, yeah, okay, reverse flies don't belong that much well, into your. Speaking to the reverse fly, I mean, if you're thinking too of just being corrective with it, right? So like being able to address things like that that are like you know deficiencies where I do need that support and I need to develop those muscles to be able to you know hold my shoulder in, in place and to be able to track properly and not create you know impingements and and things in the future. Uh, because I'm just like constantly just loading from one direction. And so I'm building, you know, these muscles like substantially, but you know, now you need to reinforce that and reinforce the joints. And so going back into hypertrophy style phase, like it helps to kind of address a lot of yeah. these issues. And, and, and again, I'm, like with Adam saying, uh, most people should train for both. I've had athletes who I've trained who competed in uh, weight category type sports like jujitsu, judo, wrestling, or boxing. And they'll say to me, I want to get a lot stronger, but I don't want to gain any muscle because I have to stay in my weight class. Mm. Now, I still train them in ways to make them stronger and build muscle. It was just a function of our diet that prevented them from gaining lots of weight. Now, why is that important? Because I still want the loudest muscle building signal so that you're lean and you have muscle so that we can preserve muscle through this process of getting you to you know meet your weight requirements. So for most people... Uh, the vast majority of you listening, you should train for strength or strength, classical strength training phases, low reps, lots of sets of fewer exercises and the types of exercises that are that are the best for strength. And you should also spend some time in that bodybuilding kind of style of training. You bring up an, actually another good point, like the, the CNS uh, adaptation portion of this is mm -hmm. a little bit different, right? So if you are, if you're training for strength, we're training where you are trying to generate the most output from your CNS versus training for muscle. It's like more of a connection, right? Yeah, and that's the skill component. That really is the skill component. Like the more times you squat perfectly, the better your central nervous system gets at giving you the most ideal squat for maximum leverage, maximum strength. Um, and it, that's what that's what you're doing when you're going up and you're doing five or six sets of three reps mm -hmm. of a squat and resting you know, two minutes or whatever in between sets and just push it. It's what you're doing. You're training your 
the skill of squatting under heavy loads. And you're going to get, you're right, Adam, that kind of adaptation versus I'm going to go do more reps. After three sets, I'm done with my squats. Now I'm doing leg press and lunges and leg curls and all these other exercises. Getting a pump, that's more of that muscle build. But they both they both contribute, yeah, you know? Right, right. And being mindful of your calorie intake. Yeah, totally. They'll definitely make a difference.